My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I give thanks to my God in heaven for the faith given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The light of a son. The Son of God became flesh and dwelt among us. We yet await that celebration tomorrow morning. The glory of God the Father come to this earth in the form of His Son, the light of the world. The evening prayer liturgy captures this so very well. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light that no darkness can overcome, a light that brightens the darkest of places, a light that shines even when we don't want it to, even when we would rather something else happen. The light of Christ shines in our life. You know, as the wise men followed the bright star in the east to the place where Jesus was born or where, where he was, that light shined. And those wise men followed that light. They knew that that light had significance, but yet what that light pointed to was an even brighter light, a light that illumines for us the ability for all of God's children to receive that very forgiveness won on the cross by this baby Jesus, the starlight as it illuminated that place where Jesus was is the same kind of light that we, God's people, have today in this dark world. A world that would ignore the very existence of the Son of God. A world that carries on without even considering what it means to be called children of the Father. Jesus Christ is truly the light of the world. The light of the Son. The Son of our God. You know, Jesus summarized his life. He summarized what the light of a son meant there in Gethsemane. He summarized it when he simply said, Thy will be done. The free love of the Son of God given to all the world was freely given. The light of the world freely given. The light of the Father. That light being his very own begotten son. It was that night there in the fields. The shepherds, as the Bible accounts for it, keeping watch over their flocks during the night. And the Bible reminds us that, lo, the angels of the Lord came to them and sang amongst them the great news of the light of the world which was born. Now, much like Mary and Joseph, when the angels appeared to them, you've got to think to yourself that they were a little bit afraid. I mean, picture it. The angels just show up, and not just show up, but start to sing. But what's even more remarkable is these shepherds went immediately. As the Bible accounts for, to see this thing, the Bible says, which had come to pass, to see the light of the world. The light, the Son of God. Jesus Christ, yes, is the light of the world. It is for us also the promise that we await for. You know, it's amazing to me, as I grew up in the church, we would come to church on Christmas Eve, and in, in my household, we also had a Christmas uh, midnight service, so we went to both. And I always remember going to bed and waking up on Christmas morning. My pastor used to always remind us that, you know, Christmas is the celebration of the birth of Christ, not Christmas Eve. And we used to always come to church, and I remember my pastor always stood at the doorway, and he always greeted us the same way. A blessed Christmas in the light of his son. When I was younger, I didn't really pay too much attention. And as I grew as a theologian, I started to realize what he was really saying. This day, we await the birth of the Savior. This day, we await the light, the Son of God. My friends, as you gather this day and you celebrate this good news, remember that all these things took place, verse 22 of the gospel lesson for this evening, to fulfill what the Lord had said. 
to fulfill what the Bible had proclaimed, the very promise that God had given to Adam and Eve at their first sinful event. I will send a Savior to take away the sin of the world. And then he chose his son. You know, for us, God's children, it is a glorious gift, freely given by the Father with no strings attached. You know, I've said during this Advent season on Sundays and during Bible class that you've got to become a receiver before you are ever going to become a giver. You've got to be able to understand that that gift that God has given to you in his son, Jesus Christ, that very babe in Bethlehem, is something that is for you, free, without earning it, without paying for it, and certainly not by your own choice. Because the Holy Spirit comes to you in holy baptism, enlightens you with the gospel, and causes you to have that faith in the light of the world. And yet there are those in this world that would use this very season to draw out of you even more benevolence. When in fact, this season is more about receiving than it is about giving. You know, all day today and yesterday I saw people on the television talking about, you know, this is the season of giving. My friends, if you don't receive that gift of the baby Jesus, you will never be a giver. If you don't have the Spirit of God in your heart to believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of all, the babe in Bethlehem who grows to be the sacrificial lamb of the world, you will never be a giver. And so we, as God's children, celebrate the gift of the light of the Son, the light that comes by the Holy Spirit through holy baptism to enlighten the world and enlighten God's church. And now God makes you little lights. Lights to go out into the world. Lights to remind others that they too are forgiven by this child in Bethlehem who grows to be the sin bearer of the world. Children are so cute when they're young. I too once was cute <laughs> and young. And now I'm just cute. <laughs> no longer young. But the fact is that as you see the peace of a child sleeping, you see the contentment of God on his people. As God looks down from above and sees the light of his son who shines on all of his people, that light is not dependent upon you. It is dependent upon the one who is the child in the manger, the savior of the world, the son of God. So rejoice and be glad as you receive the gift of God's salvation packaged there perfectly wrapped in the form of his son. Now, I don't know about any of you. Who in here is a horrible gift wrapper? Any, uh, see, okay, at least we have some honest Thank Christians you. tonight. Listen, I don't care what video you saw on YouTube about some woman who is fantastic about wrapping in all these different ways and one piece of tape and whatever else she did. That takes skill to be a good wrapper, you know? And yet the wrapping of Jesus came in swaddling clothes, in a hay feeding trough, as the Bible reminds us, in a manger. It wasn't perfectly wrapped with the creases all perfect, ironed out just right, with the right amount of tape, with a perfect little bow. No, in fact, it was quiet, wrapped in cloth, laying in a manger, and the light shined upon men. God heard the cry of his people, and he delivered. He delivered the gift of all gifts. He delivered the light of the world. Let that be your joy this day. As you celebrate for all days to come, the promises of God fulfilled both in your life and the life of all mankind. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light that no darkness can overcome. Together, God's people declare to his glory in heaven. Amen. May God the Father who gives us the great gift of his Son, may God the Son who gives us the great gift of his life in death, and may God the Holy Spirit continue to bless, guide, lead, and sustain you both now and evermore. Amen.